Armonia protects the Laney Rickman Blue Throated Macaw Reserve in the Beni Savannah, Bolivia. The Blue Throated Macaw is critically endangered with only 450 individuals in the wild. As part of Armonia's constant efforts to improve our nest box program, we set up camera traps on nest boxes in 2020 to better understand breeding threats. We made some incredible discoveries with the camera traps this year, including a threat to a pair of blue-throated macaws by another pair of blue-throated macaws. Please consider supporting the nest box program. For more information about sponsoring a nest box for the upcoming breeding season and to receive our nest box report, please follow the link below. For a list of nest box sponsors for the 2019-2020 breeding season, please refer to the Bird Endowment website at www.birdendowment.org. Humans with chainsaws have massively changed the forests in Bolivia, removing almost all of the valuable large trees. Large birds like macaws depended on these large trees to provide large tree cavities. Since 2005, Armonia has been providing nest boxes for the blue-throated macaw. A staggering 12 blue-throated macaws have successfully fledged into the wild from Armonia's nest boxes during the 2019-2020 breeding season. A total of 93 blue-throated macaws have now fledged from Armonia's nest boxes. On December 16, 2019, the first egg was laid in nest box E4, starting day one of the 2019-2020 breeding season. We had five pairs of blue-throated macaws breeding in nest boxes this season. 25 days after the first laid egg, nest box number one, adopted by Katie Secor, had two eggs. Katie was the first person to adopt a nest box when the program started in 2006. Nest box E4, adopted by Earth Limited at Southwick's Zoo, had three eggs. Nest box MK, adopted by Kathleen Hodges, had three eggs. And nest box LA8 and LA2, both adopted by Los Angeles Zoo, had three eggs each. Around 30 days from laying of the first egg, the incubated eggs started to hatch. In most of the nest boxes, the chicks all hatched within a few hours of each other, well synchronized. But from nest box LA2 hatched one considerably smaller chick. At this point, the chicks can't even hold up their heads. With good parenting, and if nature is kind, for the next 90 days begins the daily routine of the male and female raising their chicks. When the chicks first hatch, without protective feathers, the parents spend a lot of time in the nest with the naked chicks cleaning them, keeping away tropical parasites. Sunrise in the Beni Savannah is around 5 a.m. The parents usually spend the first few morning hours foraging, returning to the nest with crops full of fruit for the chicks around 8 a.m. When chicks are this small, feeding doesn't take up much time. Feeding is usually done twice a day, in the morning and late afternoon. The majority of their diet is the motaku palm fruit, which is abundant in the rainy season. During the hot tropical midday, there's usually very little activity. Feeding picks up around 4 p.m. until sundown, around 6 p.m. When the chicks are very small, one individual stays with them around the clock, including sleeping with the chicks in the nest box at night. Their care is like clockwork most of the time, but during a good rain, everything stops. A rainy morning means no breakfast for the chicks. At around 20 days old, the chicks are starting to develop protective down. All the chicks look healthy, except for one overly small chick in nest LA2. At Armonia, we try to minimize our impact on breeding macaws. There has been no science to show that blue-throated macaw chicks need a people to give additional food or to remove parasites. Here at 25 days old, 
the LA chick is significantly less developed than the other two. Do you think it should be saved and raised by people? As the chicks get older, there is a slow transition from less time in the box cleaning chicks to more time dedicated to feeding and resting on the nest box. And the space in the nest box gets tighter, we see the adults more frequently coming out of the nest box to stretch their tail and wings. The chicks at 40 days old are all looking healthy, starting to grow in their feathers and becoming more active. Our smallest LA chick continues to grow and mature. At this point, the parents are dedicated feeding machines, traveling back and forth to the nest from 8 a.m. until midday bringing food. Very little time is spent cleaning the chicks, and as the chicks get older, they are left alone in the nest far more frequently. With larger chicks, the parents no longer sleep in the nest box, but arrive early in the morning to check on their chicks before they fly off to forage for breakfast. One odd incident was this barn owl during the day which stuck its head in the nest box hole. But we suspect it was not hunting, but actually looking for a place to escape a mobbing group of purplish jays that can be heard in the background. One rainy day when the parents had left the nest box, this black-bellied whistling duck repeatedly investigated the box. But it was hardly a predator, just looking for a good cavity to lay its eggs. At one point, a group of capuchin monkeys passed near a box, making the blue de macaw parents very uncomfortable. At 75 days old, all 12 chicks are getting very close to fledgling size when they can leave the nest box. Even the smallest LA chick has grown in feathers and caught up with the siblings. Clearly, food availability is not a problem for chick development and the parents were capable of keeping the chick parasite free. So human intervention is not necessary. The camera trap also caught three very strange events of fighting between pairs of blue-throated macaws. You can see how protective the parents are of their chicks by how quickly the pair checks on their chicks in the box after the squabble. The camera trap also recorded this remarkable fight between two pairs. We only recorded these blue-throated macaw pair fights when the chicks were over 75 days old, close to fledging the nest. A critically endangered species really should be more careful. Parent behavior is changing now. With feathered large chicks more able to defend themselves, the parents clearly become more relaxed about raising their chicks. They also seldom go into the nest box now, but feed the chicks from outside. The normally noisy blue-throated macaws are remarkably silent during the breeding season, clearly to avoid giving away their location to predators. But during the last 20 days, they start becoming far more vocal while perched and flying off the nest. The parents are hanging upside down more frequently now, and it appears they are feeding the chicks less as a way to encourage them to fledge from the nest. These are the last photos of chicks we were able to take before they fledged into the wild. The first chicks fledged after 80 days. The little LA chick was the last to fledge after 95 days in the nest box. All 12 chicks fledged into the wild. The Laney Rickman Blue Throated Macaw Reserve Nest Box Program has helped 93 critically endangered Blue Throated Macaws fledge into the wild in the last 14 years. Please consider supporting this program through Bird Endowment and American Bird Conservancy at the link below.